how do you prevent relapse? I think so often we think relapse prevention is about uh, doing a lot of things. And I'm not saying that there aren't things that need to be done. Usually we don't relapse over what we do, we relapse over why we do it. In other words, I think that motivation is a huge underlying linchpin, basically, to what happens with recovery. If someone comes into my office and they weigh 400 pounds, I'll ask the question, why do you want to lose the weight? And if they tell me that their reason for doing it is to save the marriage, then I'll say, look, here's your money back. I can't help you. And they'll be going, well, why not? And, and I'll say, well, it's simply this. I mean, it takes a long time to lose 200 pounds. And somewhere between today and 200 pounds, you're probably not going to care whether or not your mate divorces you. In fact, you're probably going to want to divorce your mate. And so it would be a waste of time because I doubt that not wanting to lose your marriage is enough to sustain the type of work and effort it's going to take to make the sort of change that you ultimately want to make. All of us, when we want to change something, and relapse to me, by the way, is about a lot more than just not acting out again in a marriage. Hopefully, both parties, the us in a marriage, we want to do things differently. I actually have people that, you know, go through the courses, you know, they fill out a relapse prevention plan for themselves and for the marriage. There's three of them, right? There's one for the one that was, who strayed, and there's one for the one that's injured, and there's one for the two of us. How do we not go back to old destructive patterns? So it's easy to come up with the plan, even though, and the plan's really important, by the way. I'm not saying that's not a big issue. But I think not enough effort is really put into determining why we want to do it. So in preventing relapse, I usually recommend that couples and individuals do an urge card where they talk about the way they used to be. What are the advantages of your old way of doing things, whether it's acting out or whether it's verbal abuse, whatever the issue is that you might want to change. But what were the advantages of that? And what were the disadvantages of doing that and list out absolutely as many advantages and as many disadvantages as you can. And then make a list of the way you want to be, your new life. What are the advantages of doing things this new way? What are the disadvantages of doing this thing, you know, the new way? And if there's not a significant number of you know advantages to the new life and disadvantages to the old life. If that if those numbers aren't bigger than the advantages to the old and the disadvantages to the new, or if they're equal, then it's going to be difficult to sustain that change because there's not enough motivation. I mean, how many times does a doctor say to a patient, "Man, you need to lose weight or you'll have a heart attack." When do you think they begin to make lifestyle changes? Sadly. It's usually not till after they have the heart attack, but then they've got plenty of motivation, right? And, and I'm hoping as you look at recovery that you get really serious as to why you're doing this. I mean, for me, not ever wanting to be that guy, it wasn't just the disadvantages and the harm. It's like I had a vision of where I wanted to go, and that drew me there. And I had to begin to believe I was worth that. So, Work hard at creating an idea and motivations. And if those lists, if you do that urge card, the advantages and disadvantages of the old way, the advantages and disadvantages of the new way, if they're about equal, begin to work really hard at identifying really why do I want to do this and add to, continue to come up with reasons and motivations. Because it's going to be that why that will sustain you through the years to healing. Thank you.